Okay. All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, my name's Avanthea Samaras. Um, I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Technology, Sydney, or UTS for short. And uh, today I'm going to discuss my doctoral research project, which is about archiving and preserving film digital visual effects records. So my presentation will be a little bit similar to how um, Jimmy Jones before was talking about his doctoral research, except my topic is a bit different. Um, so um, this is the um, structure of my talk today. So I'll briefly talk about um, VFX and um, the current state of archiving in the industry. Um, then I'll go into um, my PhD research project and hopefully we'll have time at the end for some questions. Okay, so part one, film visual effects. Um, so the visual effects industry um, is mostly known by a lot of people, but I thought I'd just talk about it just in case you're not familiar with it. Um, so visual effects is the process of creating and manipulating imagery, which is computer generated and combining it with live action shots. So um, many of the processes used in visual effects are comparable to computer animation industry. So often artists work across both. Um, VFX is an element of filmmaking that has become commonplace in the last few decades. And when it's done well, um, many audiences cannot even tell if what they're watching is real or computer generated. Visual effects work spans from pre to post production. So sometimes people assume that visual effects all happens at the end of filming, but it can actually happen at the beginning of a film project to help design the visual look of a film and plan out particular shots. Um, it includes a range of tasks, which are often carried out by different teams within a visual effects company. And some of these departments might include uh, tracking, modeling, rigging, animation, texturing, servicing, lighting, matte painting effects, and digital compositing. Um, currently, the industry is made up of about 500 companies around the world. On a feature film project, um, companies will bid for work. Um, this kind of work is often referred to as shots on a film project. And much of the industry relies on um, work from Hollywood studios and blockbuster projects like Marvel Disney films. Um, these type of projects are considered um, bread and butter for the industry and often they'll use the money raised from that to work on their own smaller independent projects. Um, so on a, on a large film, there might be uh, multiple visual effects companies that will work on the single film and they might just have a handful of shots or they could have hundreds of shots. So current state of archiving in VFX. Uh, surprise, surprise, uh, currently the industry doesn't really properly archive their records. Um, archiving to them is a process of backing up their project work and shots. It's not always a planned process to preserve items long term and they don't consistently appraise and select their records and digital assets for archiving. Also, um, the industry does not generally hire any records management or archiving specialists to help manage this process. So within a visual effects company, it's usually managed by IT with some input from other departments like production or senior artists. Uh, one of the big preservation issues is that VFX companies don't actually own the rights to a lot of their work. Um, the studios or the, the production company that's commissioning the work will own the rights and the artists that work on it in the visual effects companies are considered work for hire, um, under, um, generally under American Copyright Acts. So technically it's not always clear what the visual effects companies are actually allowed to keep. Uh, also, the industry does not presently have any established practices or standards for archiving, meaning that the studios, so the owners of the material, uh, making ad hoc requests regarding what records they want, what formats and quantities, and that can change between each project or each contract. So there's not, there's not a lot of consistency. And because of this, um, there's, um, there's a risk that VFX records will become unmanageable, obsolete and lost over time. And so over here in the box on the side are some of the key challenges with archiving and preserving visual effects records. So they are very complex, um, diverse in size, format, created and stored on various mediums, often in multiple locations. Um, there are multiple agents. So as I mentioned earlier, for a single film project, you might have a studio and multiple companies working on various shots. So this makes aggregating and maintaining consistency much harder and they're destined for obsolescence. So the visual effects industry um, progresses their approaches and technologies extremely quickly. They're constantly evolving their pipelines to upgrade their tools and versions of software so that the file formats change and become out of date 
super fast. So this means preserving original formats is not always an option. Um, speaking to some artists, often they won't use the same process um, for more than a year. They'll move on. Okay, so um, I'm just going to talk a little briefly about a case study to illustrate this problem. Um, in his article, The Lost Picture Show by Marty Perlmutter, I recommend this paper, it's excellent. Um, he provides the following case study about what can happen when CGI film projects are not properly archived and preserved. So quoting Marty, when Pixar wanted to release its 2003 film Finding Nemo for Blu-ray 3D in 2012, the studio had to re-render the film to produce the 3D effects. The studio by then was no longer using the same animation software system, and it found that certain aspects of the original could not be emulated in its new software. The movement of seagrass, for instance, had been controlled by a random number generator, but there was no way to retrieve the original seed value for that generator. So animators manually replicated the plant's movements frame by frame, a laborious process. The fact that the studio had lost access to its own film after less than a decade is a sobering commentary on the challenges of archiving computer-generated work. So this is where my doctoral research comes in. So we're up to part two of the talk today. So um, first of all, I'm not studying my PhD in an information sciences school like Jimmy Jones is. Um, instead, I'm doing it out of a brand new school at UTS called the UTS Animal Logic Academy. Uh, Animal Logic is one of Australia's biggest and longest established visual effects companies. And the Academy has been set up to deliver an intensive master's degree in animation and visualization. And the cohort at the um, school learns directly from the industry to gain up-to-date knowledge and skills about visual effects, animation, gaming, augmented and virtual reality. And currently there are three PhD candidates at the Academy, including myself. Um, so the students here um, are in a, a very unique program and they've already started winning awards for the work that they're producing and they're exhibiting their work in various festivals around the world. So I encourage you to look into what they're doing. It's really exciting. Um, so my thesis um, proposes that the ongoing digital preservation of significant records produced by the film visual effects industry requires the application of archival methods. So I'm an archivist, so of course I'm going to have that opinion. My job's going to be trying to convince industry that they should adopt archiving practices. So the aims of my research, two main aims, improve records management and archiving practice within the industry and ensure that significant VFX records are digitally preserved over time. So pretty big remit. <laughs> um, Objectives to do this, um, first of all, I'm really keen to work with industry to identify the types of records that have ongoing value and warrant preservation as archives. So talking with VFX practitioners and studio archivists to understand which, which types of records should be kept long term. We can't keep everything, but what, what do we keep? I also want to um, hope to determine which archival and metadata standards and models could be applied or created to arrange and describe these types of records. So um, this will involve uh, researching current standards but also talking to other people in comparable fields of study. So I, I met with a researcher the other day who's looking into describing net-based art, which was quite interesting. Um, so maybe not exactly the same, but how do other institutions deal with these complex software-based art um, collections? And I also hope to co-develop an industry resource that outlines archival concepts and recommended approaches to support archiving. And I really want my discussions with industry to guide what this um, format and the content of this resource will be. So at this stage, I'm not really sure what it will be. And I really want, um, basically I want industry to direct the outcomes and this approach draws from the inclusive research design framework which was developed by Sue McKemish of Monash University in Australia with some other archival science scholars so it's really about um, including the, um, the industry in my research and letting them, le letting them direct the outcomes as opposed to me telling them what they should be doing. So why am I doing this research? Um, well, I have quite a unique um, experience of having worked both in the visual effects industry and in the archival sector. I've only been in um, archiving for the last about five or six years. And before that, I worked in media production and I worked for a visual effects company that actually closed down. So I knew firsthand what, what can happen when the work that these artists produce is lost. Um, 
and I, know, and I have a very good idea of what the benefits could be if we do keep these kind of records, So um, some of which are written up here. So ensuring that first-hand evidence about the how, why and who of various film projects is preserved and accessible over time. So researchers won't just rely on making of videos or blogs or magazine articles for information. They'll actually have the source records to go to. And this is something you'll see now. Often you'll see these great making of books, but they're just talking about the best case scenarios. It doesn't really reveal the real processes and the struggles that went through to make some of these projects. It also provide valuable knowledge to support current and future visual effects productions and processes so artists can more easily refer back to past records about production, um, creative, design or technical information. And also um, VFX also encompasses a range of different creative and technical skills. So keeping records from this industry could offer really valuable insights into general filmmaking, visual storytelling, technical production and digital design practices. So um, that pretty much sums up my PhD um, research. Um, if anyone's got any questions, I think we've got time for one or two questions. One, yeah. one question. <laughs> one question, please. Um, any questions from the YouTube chat? Oh. Hello, my name's Will Master. I'm a curator of contemporary fiction at the BFI National Archive, and we're currently grappling with some of the uh, issues that you raised in your presentation. I was really interested for you to say that you had a sort of twin objective of educating the industry as much as exploring how collecting organisations might develop a methodology internally to do this kind of work. What are the cost... I mean, not, an, not an exact figure, but sort of how massive are the cost implications for collecting organisations that have traditionally worked with analogue material and are sort of getting to grips with digital now to, to embrace this kind of work properly uh, and do it properly. Yeah, this is the problem. Um, a lot of studios have uh, sort of under the table agreements with visual effects companies to say, oh, well, you can keep this material on our behalf, can't you, if you would like this job? So it's actually something that um, the industry is having to kind of carry themselves because it is quite costly. Um, so it's kind of hard to project exactly how much it is because um, the industry does have um, quite um, sophisticated storage and technical infrastructures in place to do their work. So they are in some respects designed to be able to maintain their own work. But I very much want to talk with um, collecting institutions such as yourself to determine like how how viable is it for us, for collecting institutions and universities and whatnot to, to start collecting this material because visual effects companies aren't really, shouldn't be relied upon to do that. Um, also, I, I suppose a lot of the focus on my research is around selection and appraisal because it's not, it is, because it is quite expensive and the, there's a lot of, there's large volumes when we're working with this material. I think it's really important to, um, to be really quite selective about what we're keeping as evidence to support the um, the larger film collection itself. So what, what other elements of a film project do we want to keep and why and how does visual effects add to that? So um, I didn't really answer your question, but it's something I would like to explore a little bit further and I would like to talk to, um, to some collecting institutions about the viability of, of starting to collect this material.